Um, you can get an idea of occlusion, though, um, in your clinic without being too complicated about this. One way of doing it is to have the patient just rest their head back on you this way. Helps if you've got a bit of a tummy. Let them rest back, grasp the jaw in your hands, and have them relax. And then basically what I'm going to do is just try and tap his teeth together, like so. And as I do this, I want him to note whether both sides hit at the same time. So, do they? Mm -hmm. Okay. If, um, if we had a, a very noticeable malocclusion, then we're going to find that one side is likely to hit before the other. Um, but as I say, I think if you want to get more sophisticated in your malocclusal test, you either specialise in this area and learn how to do it properly, or you refer to them to somebody who can. Um, I would strongly suggest, though, so, before you rush out and get a patient an occlusal splint, that you very definitely try and treat the problem first. Give them three, four, five weeks of treatment before they go out and spend $500 on a splint. Um, the fact is that I think you're going to find that nearly every patient you see will have a malocclusion. And of course, if nearly every patient's got a malocclusion it's, and the dentist assesses for it, it's going to be found. And the assumption is that the malocclusion is at the root of the problem and so be corrected with a splint. That is not necessarily true. So give your patient a good chance at getting better with um, modalities, rest, manual therapy techniques, re-education. Okay? And give them a chance to recover without having plastic put inside their mouth.